Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we are looking at the new Sniper Series lenses from Sure. They were kind enough to send these over to me about a month ago and I've gotten to put them through their paces on a professional project as well as some personal projects. And so I'm going to talk to you guys about my experience today and what I think. A quick disclaimer about gear. They did send these to me, but they're not getting any control over what I say. These are my genuine opinions and I can share anything positive or negative that I want. In addition, I just wanna share my approach to gear on this channel is to say yes to companies that reach out when the product is something that I am genuinely interested in using and I think might be helpful to someone out there in my audience. And so if you guys look back across my channel, that is my hope and I'm gonna keep it that way moving into the future. Anytime I do talk about gear, it's something that I think is cool that I would potentially use and I just want to share my thoughts and hope that it would help you. When it comes to just my first impressions, I'm just going to cut to the chase and say I think these lenses are great. They're a very affordable option while not feeling cheap. I think the image is very creative and fun without going too far and feeling gimmicky. And so we're going to get into what exactly I mean by that in this video. But when it comes to just a general overview of this set, I'm just going to read a few things. So these are the first autofocus lenses for mirrorless cameras from Sure. This comes with a 23, a 33, and a 56 millimeter in both E mount. Mount, X mount, and Z mount. Sure states it also uses ED glass like the Nightwalker series, which we will talk about, um, which not only reduces the size of the lens, but it also perfectly rejects the lens breathing effect and increases sharp image quality. And they also do come in a cool case that looks like this. When it came to how I got to use these lenses, I got to use these on a full client project as well as a bunch of personal shoots just over the last month. I wanted to show you guys both those contexts as I don't think it's helpful when someone just shows you the lens in their office like this. I wanted to put them through their paces and so I did use all three lenses on a client shoot that I'm going to be showing you guys some footage from. When it comes to the price point of these lenses, I think it's around I think this price range for lenses of this quality is very reasonable, especially compared to the other options in this market. And specifically for the Fuji system, I'm gonna to get to those lenses towards the end of this video and just kind of talk about why I might go with something like this over the other options. And so stay tuned to the end for that. When it comes to autofocus, I know this is probably one of the most important categories to you guys, and I'm gonna try and go over it quickly. But overall, these lenses are really, really good when it comes to reliability, amazing, the way they stay locked on, there is no weird hunting or background jitters where it's trying to switch the focus really quickly. It just stays locked on, especially with face tracking like you're seeing here in this scene. And then when it comes to adjustability, you can fully tweak these with Fujifilm's autofocus custom settings. So you can adjust the speed as well as how locked on you want these lenses to be. Last category I'm going to talk about is just focus pulling. And at first, really worried me because if you look at the back of the LCD screen, you're going to see this like jitter between different subjects. And I realized that is only there when you have not hit the record button. And so I don't know if this is a feature in Fujifilm cameras to help save on battery life or something, but basically the autofocus is not fully engaged until you are recording. And then the autofocus on these lenses is incredible. So not sure, yeah, if it's a Fujifilm thing, a specific thing with these lenses, but once you are recording, then it is buttery smooth the way that it transitions and you can really tune in the speed with the settings like I mentioned before. So definitely play around with what suits your needs. But overall, really amazing. I was really surprised to find how good the autofocus was on these lenses and I will go as far to say they are near perfect. I don't think there is anything more that I could ask for out of a set of lenses that is utilizing autofocus. So overall, well done Sure, and I really think these help the Fujifilm's autofocus to shine. Quick note on manual focus, these are focused by wire, which is not my favorite for using these lenses manually. I would primarily be using them with autofocus, um, but it's definitely not the worst that I've seen. You can definitely pull focus by hand pretty easily. And it's important to note there is no autofocus or manual focus switch on the side of the lens. So if you do have them in autofocus mode on the camera, but then you want to actually manually override it, you're gonna make sure on your Fuji camera to have AF plus MF turned on in the settings. Otherwise, when you manually turn the lens, it is not going to make any adjustment unless you flip the camera into manual mode. When it comes to focus breathing, they state that the lens technology does not introduce any. I would say if there is any, it is barely there and you're definitely going to have to pixel peep to really notice it. I think when I was filming normal scenarios, pulling focus, I did not notice any focus breathing at all. Moving on to image quality, we're going to talk about the bokeh. 
I think it's super nice, very beautiful, a little bit swirly towards the edges, which I found particularly nice, but it's not distractingly unique or gimmicky. I'd say the bokeh just generally seems like round to ovalish, but in general, really liked it. I'm gonna show you guys some examples shot at F1.2. And I think this definitely gives kind of full frame vibes for those um, shooting on micro four thirds cameras. I think the depth of field that you're gonna get out of these is really beautiful. When it comes to vignetting, I'm just gonna say this, I'm not the clinical lens test guy and I'm not going to do tests like that. On lenses, I think there's other people that are gonna probably talk about that in their review. I'd say there is vignetting on all the lenses at f1.2, but it is not super noticeable to me in normal context. I think if you film a white wall, you might notice it, but um, definitely did not bother me. It's most notable in the wider lenses, so the 23 millimeter. But again, I didn't really notice this when I was grading the footage or while shooting. It's not a distracting amount of vignetting, but just know that there is some, and I think that is probably one of the trade-offs you're getting for a lens at this price point. When it comes to flares, I think they're really nice. Overall, I was really happy. My 18-35 to is a pretty clean lens and actually does not flare very much. I think using these, it was just very fun to find some creative flares and they didn't seem super extreme. I think in general, I liked how they looked. You will see this one here that I did not like. I only found this in this one shooting scenario. This was the sun coming through this glass in my window and then hitting the lens and it did kind of leave this weird line. It was not my favorite, so I would probably just not shoot in this exact angle. It was pretty easy to move the camera, but I just wanted you to know there was one kind of odd one that I got. When it comes to sharpness, I'm gonna say they're balanced. Again, I'm not gonna scientifically test this, but in general, I find them a little bit softer than my 18 to 35 and 24 to 70, but not distractingly soft like a vintage lens, especially at f1.2. I was surprised at how well these just hold a balanced amount of sharpness. There is a little bit of halation and chromatic aberration that we're gonna get into, but I think in general, these feel really well balanced. When it came to consistency across the set, I did just do this quick test and there's slight variations, just probably in the coating of the lens or just what naturally the lens will shift towards. So again, this is just a simple white balance correction in post, but these aren't being sold as a match set. There will be slight variations. And I also get that in my 18 to 35 and 24 to 70. It is not the biggest deal, but just did wanna share that with you guys. When it comes to some things that are not necessarily pros nor cons, they just might matter to you. I'm gonna talk about those real quick. There's no aperture ring like on some other Fuji lenses. My workflow was assigning the button on the front of the camera to toggle the front dial between shutter speed and aperture. That seemed to work really well. And then aesthetics are not my favorite on these lenses. Kind of has the carbon fiber look, but it's not the biggest deal. Um, and they also sell a white option, which is also not really my vibe. So definitely not the prettiest lenses I've ever seen, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. When it comes to downsides or flaws, the first one we're gonna talk about is just weather sealing. It's something me and my friend John were discussing when it comes to these lenses. He shoots in a lot more kind of all weather conditions on the beach in rain. And he kind of mentioned this as a potential con. It does seem like there are some pretty easy areas where moisture and sand and debris could work their way into these lenses. So that is just something to know. I think that is probably one of the downsides of the price point. There's a little bit of chromatic aberration and fringing kind of leans either green or magenta depending on where your focus is at and it is most notable at f1.2. Again, there's probably someone who's gonna more clinically test this. I find that it just adds a little bit of character to the image. It's not necessarily the worst thing and so if you are looking for the cleanest you know, set of prime lenses, this probably isn't for you, but I would say in general, it's pretty controlled and actually really similar to the Nightwalker lenses that were recently released. And I feel like in general, people really liked the look of. Okay, so really quick, I'm just gonna talk through kind of comparing these lenses to other things on the market and my general thoughts. And so the first one is the Sigma Contemporary Series. I had the 30 mil F 1.4 for a few months. I was just trying it, thought that I would like it just due to the size in general. I found it had pretty bad focus breathing and just the autofocus was not very reliable. And so that set is a similar price point, but I'd say in general, really like these over those. Next would be lenses from 
Fujifilm. I think in general, I don't have the most experience, but I would say they just trend to be more expensive for you know lenses that look a similar quality. So I'm not gonna talk too much about it, but I would say these seem like a great price point in comparison to what is out there directly from Fuji. And then the last category is just some options from Viltrox. And so the closest equivalent would be some of these options they have at the F1.2, but I think you're gonna be paying a bit more for what their lenses are costing. And then for the F1.4 versions, they are very similar in price, if not cheaper, but you do not get the autofocus custom settings. And so I think these kind of win in that regard in this category, because it does give you that flexibility to really tune the lenses to how you want your autofocus to perform. And I did hear with those Viltrox lenses, that was definitely a con for some people. And then when it comes to these and the Nightwalker lenses from Sure, I actually got to test them side by side. And I will say they're not not an exact one-to-one -one match. I would say these lean maybe a touch more contrasty and maybe a touch more sharp, but I would say in general, they feel very similar. I was able to color grade them in post to be near identical. And I would say the bokeh and just the general image characteristics seemed very similar to those. So if you like the look of those, but were turned off by kind of the cine style manual lenses and you want autofocus, I think these are a great option that is now available. When it comes to just the prime lens workflow, it's definitely not my favorite as a solo shooter with the projects that I'm doing a lot of times. I am shooting on zoom lenses and that is definitely to save time. On the project that I was shooting with these, I did swap between all the lenses a few times just to get some different takes. And I did find that just not my favorite workflow, just switching prime lenses, especially because I was shooting with a variable ND as well. So I was having to take off the lens, also take off the variable ND, and just ultimately it was slowing us down as we only had about an hour to shoot everything before the light went down. And so in general, that's not a knock on these lenses, but that is just my general preference. I think I prefer zooms in most scenarios that I'm shooting, but it was a fun challenge and change just to get to challenge myself by shooting on prime lenses. When it comes to who these lenses are for, I'm just gonna read through some quick suggestions. I think they're for someone looking for native X mount prime lenses at a budget price point with great image quality and great autofocus performance. I think they can be used in both personal and professional contexts. I think if you're someone coming from full frame and are missing that look and the depth of field, I think you will really love these. If you're someone looking for low light performance, the F1.2 is gonna be really nice. And I think if you're someone just looking for an everyday carry lens, my personal one of choice is the Canon 24 millimeter F 2.8 pancake. I adapt this to Fuji cameras and it's just a really great lens to throw on my camera when I'm wanting to take my camera out and about. And I think the 23 millimeter F 1.2 from Sure in this set would be a great alternative. I'm definitely gonna be grabbing for that more often now that I have these lenses. It's gonna be a little bit bigger than what I have now, but I think in general, just the image kind of character is really fun and the F 1.2 is definitely really nice to have. To end this video, I'm just going to do a little Q&A. You guys have dropped some questions in my last two videos and I just wanted to speak to some of those things in more detail specifically if it'd be helpful. So first, several questions on autofocus. So the first one, is the autofocus accurate? Is it like Fuji lenses or not? I'm going to say yes, the autofocus is accurate. Is it perfect? I don't think so. Unfortunately, I don't have any Fuji lenses to compare it to. And so you guys should use this review along with other reviews that people are also gonna be putting out to make your decision. But I would have a hard time believing that the autofocus on these would not be as good as native Fuji glass. In my testing, autofocus was incredibly reliable. And for the majority of scenarios that I'm shooting in, I think it is very good. Someone said, I tested these out for myself, only from a friend. The autofocus isn't as good as Fuji's glass, kind of slow, gets confused and hunts. Kind of a shame. Did you notice the USB-C port hopefully can be fixed in firmware? I'm really curious if this is the issue that I talked about earlier in the video, where if you click the record button, all of that goes away. That's something that I noticed and was initially my concern with these lenses. I thought the autofocus was quite bad and it was jumping. And that is truly because the autofocus custom settings don't engage with these lenses until you hit the record button. So I'm really curious. Um, I do not relate to, you know, people saying it, it's slow, gets confused and hunts. And I think it's also to note the autofocus settings that you're using really matter. You need to be using 
point-based autofocus, not the multi-mode. You need to be, you know, using face tracking when you want it to track a face. You need to turn face traffic tracking off when you're not, and you do need to mess with those custom settings to kind of dial in the autofocus to your liking. So that's all I'm going to say there. I'm really curious if it is that issue because I have not had that with these lenses and I have not done any firmware updates and I have not heard um, that at all from Sugray that that would even be coming down the line anytime soon. So hope that helps. Try hitting the record button and then checking your autofocus settings. Someone asked, does this lens have stabilization or is autofocus the only new feature? They do not have stabilization. And yeah, I guess autofocus is the new feature from Suray. This is their first set of lenses that have had that. So hope that helps. Next questions are just about native glass in general. Someone asked, how do all the focal lengths compare to their Fuji counterparts? I've mentioned this a few times. I don't have any Fuji lenses. You guys can go watch videos on my channel about why I don't own lenses from Fuji. So I can't do any direct testing and I don't want to say anything um, that's going to lead you guys, you know, to a wrong conclusion. So I'm hoping my review along with a bunch of other ones can help you guys make an informed decision. But I would say if you're wanting the best image quality and autofocus performance and you do not care about price, just buy Fuji glass. If you're looking to save money, I think there's like lots of options out there. If you're wanting to branch out from the Fuji system with lenses, I think there's a lot of options out there. That's what I've done. And primarily that's due to price, to the image quality ratio, to just kind of the longevity of other brands of lenses. So that's just gonna be really all I can share on that regard. I don't think these are going to be uh, cleaner than native Fuji glass. There is some halation, there is some chromatic aberrations. It really depends on your use cases, um, but I can't definitively say if they're better or worse. Someone asked about the colors coming out of these lenses in comparison to Fuji glass. And I think what they mean is just like the coating on the lenses. I don't think they're gonna be a one-to-one -one match. Even within this set I showed earlier in this video, there's slight color variations in the coatings or whatever's happening internally with the lenses that does kind of shift the white balance. So I would not expect these to be a one-to-one -one match with Fuji glass if you are trying to shoot them together. But again, I think if you do basic color grading, color correction, I don't really see that as an issue with lenses and using lenses from different brands or anything. Someone asked, is the material of the lens plastic or metal? Um, outside of the lenses, it's like a hard plastic and then there is like the carbon fiber kind of barrel area. And then someone asked, is the lens glass actually glass or is it plastic? It's definitely glass. I've never honestly seen a lens with a plastic front or rear element. So um, if that exists, that's crazy. Someone asked, I'm curious about the photography results from these lenses, like sharpness when shooting with the widest aperture and chromatic aberration. So I can't really speak to what photographers want. I'm not a professional photo shooter. I don't really use my lenses a lot of the times for photo work. So I'm hoping again, there's gonna be other reviews out there that speak to how photographers like these. I think when it comes to autofocus performance, seems like that would be fine. I think maybe the downside for some photographers might be some of the image characteristics. I would say in general, like halation, bloom, um, chromatic aberration. I think some of that does hold more value in the video space because people talk about that as like interesting character, whereas like photographers and maybe the photo community at times probably leans towards wanting like really clear images that are going to get blown up or printed or I don't know. So I wouldn't necessarily say that they're not for photographers, but again, I don't really know exactly what photographers would even want, but I think for video, they're awesome. Okay, several questions about these versus the Nightwalkers. Someone said, are they better than the Nightwalker series? Which one to choose for filmmakers? And then someone in general just asked, yeah, how do they compare? So I showed you guys earlier in the video kind of the, the color comparison. I think the biggest thing you have to think about when it's these versus the Nightwalkers, there's not one that's better. They're just for like completely different audiences. So Nightwalkers are for someone wanting a manual focus lens experience. If you want to focus your lens, manually by hand or with a follow focus, you would see value in having the gears on there that you can attach a follow focus quite easily to. That is the Nightwalkers. I think these are for the people that maybe liked the image quality coming out of the Nightwalkers, but 
really rely on autofocus. And I don't really see people using these and focusing manually by hand because they are focused by wire. It's not like the easiest experience to nail focus. And so I think those are kind of, that's the differentiator for me. If you're wanting budget cine lens experience, manual focus, go with the Nightwalkers. If you're wanting autofocus, go with these. And I would say image characteristics are not a one-to-one -one match, but I would say are quite similar. Okay, moving on to the character of the lenses. How is the flaring and chromatic aberrations? There is some flaring, talked about this earlier. I honestly think it's quite good. I don't think it's like a really dramatic and chromatic aberrations. There is some, I think it really depends on what you're shooting, how close you are. I think in a lot of the stuff I filmed, I did not notice it at all. Um, other times when I filmed things at F1.2 really close up, it is there. But again, I think this comes down to personal style and there are so many people especially on like instagram and even like youtube that are doing film emulations who are editing you know their images very heavily to emulate film and i would say that is something you see when you shoot film you do see some um halation chromatic aberration with using cine lenses so i'd say it's definitely like a stylistic choice and i could see some people who want a really clean image not liking the chromatic aberration. Someone asked, do these lenses have the softness cine look? I wouldn't say so. They're not like vintage lenses, but I'd say they're like a little less sharp than like a Sigma 18 to 35 or 24 to 70 that I commonly use, but I wouldn't say they're like overly soft like some cine lenses. Two final questions to end. Somebody asked, do you do any Black Friday sale for your LUTs? Yes, it's happening right now. Final question is just where to buy these. They are launching today on Indiegogo at the limited edition cheaper price. I think after that, then they will be, price will be going up and they'll be on b and Adorama, Amazon, wherever else you guys buy things. So if you guys are interested, I would encourage you to go check out the Indiegogo. Link is going to be in my description. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I don't think it's possible for me to hit everything that people want to know about these lenses, but I hope that this video would be helpful to you if you are on the fence trying to decide if you like these. I'd say in conclusion, my overall thoughts, I really like them. I give them a thumbs up. I don't think they're for everybody. I don't think they're for someone who wants the cleanest image possible, but I would say in all regards, when it comes to autofocus, character, just general performance with these lenses, I'm really happy. I'm not necessarily a prime lens guy, so I think that's also like something I talked about in here, but something to consider. That's not my workflow of choice with the projects I'm doing, but I don't think that that is the case for everybody. Tons of friends shoot on prime lenses, and so many people are wanting that full frame look on APS-C cameras. They're using speed boosters, and I think it's just something that some people find a lot of value in. So overall, I think there's a lot of people who will really love these lenses, and I hope that this video helps you make that decision if it's you. I would encourage you guys, go watch all the other reviews probably coming out today on these lenses. Go watch people talking about these who come from different contexts than me, that shoot different things, that even have a different approach to filmmaking. I think you guys should take all of that into account when you're trying to decide if you should buy something. I definitely do it. I watch reviews from people I really love, but also people that have different opinions from me and I'm trying to decide, you know, is this a wise purchase for me? Is this something that is going to work for my workflow? So I hope that I would just be one piece in that equation for you guys if you're trying to figure it out. And overall, I really just appreciate your support of me here on this channel. I hope that you would find this review honest, transparent. Not that I'm trying to sell something to you guys because I don't think anyone needs these, but could be nice for someone out there if you have been looking for something like these lenses. So thank you guys again for watching and I will catch you in the next video. Peace.